A very good morning and welcome to Nigeria Now on your Digital Affairs Pan African News Network TOS Television, uh, the program which brings you newspaper analysis from the various uh, national dailies here in Nigeria. My name is Sagir Ibrahim, and with me in the studio today is a very special guest, the general manager here at TOS Television, as well as a social affairs commentator, Mr. Dakbo Banjo. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Sagir. It's good to it's be really, in the studio. It's really, really, really nice having you here yeah, in the studio. Yeah, good to be me, in the sir. studio. Okay, so let's just begin. Uh, we start with the Daily Independent newspaper, and we see on the, uh, as, as the banner headline, Jega Ahmed, Duke Utomi lead move to upstage. APC government says nepotism lack of exclusiveness gave rise to agitations, lament insecurity, collapse of economy, despite claim of GDP rise. So, so I would just want to get your reaction on this headline, first of all. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I, I think people have a right um, to associate. I think people have a right to also join any political party or a movement. Um, obviously, the ruling party, APC, um, has become very vulnerable because so many things has happened uh, since they took over in 2015. And they ran the first uh, four years and now they're in the last uh, uh, run of another four years. And you will see that so many uh, issues, I mean, myriad of issues is bedeviling the nation vis-a-vis -vis security, vis-a-vis uh, -vis economy. Uh, you can also talk about almost all the sectors of the Nigerian, uh, of the Nigerian space not really doing as well uh, as they should. Uh, and so when you have people who are really very strong in the society coming together to form uh, something more like uh, a group that can make either the government to do more or to unsettle to them to be able to get the right things done. Uh, I don't think that is bad in, in, its, in, in any sense. Okay, okay. so, so I want to ask this. Now, if there's something that Nigeria has in abundance, we know is technocrats. So the question is, for a very long time, we've seen these technocrats thrive outside the political space. But whenever we see one of them, you know, make an attempt to, say, contest um, elective offices, it just ends up being a nightmare for them. And now we are seeing the likes of Atairu Jega um, and Donald Duke and even Patutomi, you know, coming to form a front to lead against the APC government. Do you think this is workable or even achievable, to say the least? Now, it's becoming really more dangerous when you have an Atairu Jega who used to be, um, I mean, the prof, who used to be uh, the man in charge of the Independent National Electoral Commission yes. in Nigeria. Here is a man who understands the dynamics of how elections have been won and lost. So when you have that kind of a person, no more independent, but is depending on other forces or people to get in into political space, then you can be rest assured that we have a very big problem in our hands. I expect that the APC right now should sit up with an Atai Rujega coming up to say, we will do something to make sure APC does not come back in 2023. Yes. That is really very instructive. And my belief is that they will re-strategize and rethink to have somebody like that, because right now, at the moment, is just the vice, uh, is just the chancellor of one of the high institutions mm. in Nigeria at yes. the moment, and so is free to associate with any political party or any political movement. And now, I'm beginning to feel that a Donald Duke is a young guy. Nigeria is beginning to think along that side, not to recycle any of the guys who have been in the space. Yeah. Be it Atiku from PDP, be it another stalwart, maybe somebody like uh, Ameg Bola Tinumbu uh, for Jamaica. APC, and so many other political parties may eventually present candidates yes. that are really worthy. But more importantly, is that the APC should know that everybody and everything in the in the Nigerian political space is working against them based on so many things that is bo that bothers around performance. And so right now I'm beginning to wonder if an Atairu Jeka gets into the space, trust me, he knows how election is being prosecuted, he knows what it costs to prosecute an election, he knows when elections are won, when they are lost, when there are manipulations. And so that's a man everybody should be af afraid of. He's an intelligent man. I have worked with him at a point in time very closely and I know that he's really very deep when it comes to the issues of politics in Nigeria. And so... With, a, with an Atai Rujeka, with um, a, a Patu Tommy, an economist, and with a Donald Duke, Duke who, was one, uh, who was one time eight years governor, governor of you know, of Cross River State. That guy and that team is a team 
to be afraid of. Hmm. So the 2023 elections just it's, got It's really very intriguing. Yes. All right. So um, at the top right of the Daily Independent newspaper, we see anti-open grazing laws unenforceable, Erufai tells Southern Governors. Says Kaduna 10 billion cattle ranch will be ready in two years. Delta Assembly passes anti-open grazing bill. And this headline is also replicated on the Blueprint newspaper. As a matter of fact, it's the major headline on the Blueprint newspaper. Southern Governor's anti-open grazing law unimplementable. And that's by Erufai. So, sir, I want to ask, for the governor of Kaduna State to have made such utterances, you know, and knowing fully well that the open grazing law does not in any case cover, especially even the open the grazing routes does not cover any states in the southern part of the country. What ground does he have, first of all, to make this statement? Anyway, I mean, it's a, it's a political office holder. Uh, and almost everything, no matter how big or small, security has been played down. We've politicized it. Economy has been played down. It's been polit heavily politicized. Yes. Um, so many things going on at the same time. Even the elections in Nigeria, is a, it, I mean, it's politics. Okay? So he may have made a political statement. And at the same time, he may be serious about it. We have always had grazing routes in the north. That was where uh, all of these things have been happening long before now. Trying to extend that or create an, an, an extension of the grazing routes in the, in, the, in the south is an indication that the north just want to do a national representation of themselves across all geopolitical zones. Okay. It's a strategy. So the president is also involved in a way pushing the grazing law. But thank God that so almost, I mean, in the southeast, anti-grazing law bill has been signed into law. In the southwest, anti-grazing law has also been signed into law. And that's to tell you that everyone in the political space, governors, commissioners, ministers, everybody is beginning to protect their region. To saying that we will not allow the emancipation or most probably, allow me to just mention that a little, it could be a form of an ethnic cleansing because you eventually um, uh, integrate the Marudas into every, every geopolitical yes, zone. Yes. And so if anything goes by or goes wrong or goes down, you have a people who are mindful about the way they live their lives and then you have another set of people who are very careless about the way they live their lives. So we are in a very dire situation and that situation empowers the North more than all the other geopolitical zones. So that statement by RFI may be extremely political but at the same time it has substance. Okay, so sorry, final one. Um, in, in A couple of weeks ago it was in the news that the president had reviewed some 256 or around 300 grazing routes across 24 states in the federation knowing fully well that there are just 19 northern states and only these 19 northern states were covered you know by the open grazing law and I, I want to ask is this not a violation of the fundamental rights of state governors as well as indigents of this state you know knowing fully well that the land use act give powers to governors of the state and not the federal government, you know, to have jurisdiction over land where they oversee as governors of the state. So for the president to come reviewing, you know, uh, the grazing routes across states that were not even part of the northern, the then northern region, don't you think this is a violation of human rights? No, it, it is a violation in a form. But we need to understand, you know, the human, I mean, the land, you know, use act, act, use act, that everything under the land yes. belongs to the federal government, but everything above, above the land belongs to the governor. They have a final say. And so federal government still have a representation in all states of the federation. Underneath. Underneath. Yes. And so there is no crime if the government wants to come over and say, all right, we still need some a, a, a few other uh, spaces to be able to do what we want to do. For example, you still have state roads and you still have federal, federal roads, roads even across the six geopolitical zones in Nigeria. All, all right. Thank you very much. Uh, so the Nigerian News Direct newspaper here, for the banner headline states, balanced geopolitical representation, Buari six amendment of PIA. Board without ministers makes NNPC commercial entity, Oyebanji. Amendment shows Buhari is flexible. Uh, for the business day newspaper we see foreign airlines increase interest in nigeria as travel rebounds and for daily trust we see nigerians grown as cooking gas price 
keeps soaring. Unfortunately, we're out of time. I would have really wanted to ask, you know, my GM here a couple of questions around this headline. Unfortunately, we're out of time. You could connect with us um, on our various social media platforms at TOS TV Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, as well as watch a recap of Nigeria now via our YouTube page at TOS TV Network. You could also read some of our content via our website at www.tostvnetwork.com. My name is Sagir Ibrahim, and thank you so much for watching. Thank you.